Welcome back everyone to TNO, the last news of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Michael Lover, and we must continue with the failures of Dudaism, or the F word. It's perhaps surprising to hear it after the battery we've received over the last, last half century. That democracy has proven its worth, declared Chairman Macmillan to an attentive crowd. Indeed, it is a striking testimony to the efficacy of representative government that we have survived all that we did and come out intact. Harold, the last turn of you might say, surely it is the F words who stand up atop the uh, modern world in triumph, and to which I respond that this is exactly how we know that Dudism is a failed system. The crowd murmured in confusion, and the chairman shuffled in place for a moment as he waited for the crowd to quiet down. We only need to get stock of what the national Dudists have done with their place at the apex of Europe, to know that they have squandered it all. The failure of this Dudism is remarkably self-evident in their actions. The Reich possessed all the good things a nation could want, the Reich had wealth, but by acting based on rhetoric rather than reason they burned it all the way on frivolity. The Reich had land seized from all the good nations of Europe, and yet through their ill stewardship they now find themselves strangled by the people who inhabit it. Lastly, they had purpose, a fire burning in their nation, that led them on a grand warpath, but this too they wasted. That fire could have been a renaissance, it could have been built monuments and industrial zones and wonders that the world has never seen before. Instead, the great patriotic drive cost them a generation, not to mention their souls. Thus, it is with great encouragement in my heart that I must proclaim that Dudism has failed, even when they stood at the apex of the world, whereas democracy prevailed, even in the darkest of times. Because we here, we love democracy. <laughs> National Dudism would never work in England, it doesn't even work in Germany. But let's continue on with our path, because we are in the second half of Papa Super Mac Macmillan's Focus Tree, and which that event just came from, Dudism failed again. Let's make sure that never happens again, or we could do this for the party rots. I, I prefer maybe doing the right reforms, or a job for every Englishman. Throughout the decades of royal party leadership, every attempt to figure out how to fix the problems that England faced failed. While it's easy to pl place blame or blame the times, we cannot forget that due to their nature, the makeup of the royal party in many respects simply doesn't understand what the average Englishman wants. What use is glory <clears throat> for a hungry stomach, or prestige for the university educated working odd jobs to make ends meet? What care are they for claims of traitors in their midst when the weeks of looking for work turns out to be fruitless? Every Englishman shall have a job that he, should he desire it. If more are needed, then that's what the government shall create one way or another. Macmillan has shown us the way, and United England shall follow. Very nice. And actually, let's take a look back up here. 100% so, which is great. Uh, we definitely need to increase this one, but jobs, anybody? Jobs? Reduce unemployment, that is quite good. In here, and the G total GDP is pretty awesome. National debt is not terrible either, but let's continue with no more discrimination. Sure. The value of jobs will increase by domestic a, mo a moderate amount. Britain, many people forget, was nominally a union, but the unequal treatment of her constituent parts is why she fell to pieces when pressed where other nations survived or strove onwards. Under Macmillan, England will not make the same mistake. Regardless of religion, race, or gender, nobody should be forced to stand by and do nothing when discriminated against. We are not the barbaric Germans, heads filled with outdated ideas of racial superiority and chauvinism. This is England, a nation where every man and woman alike will have a shot at success. On a more practical note, discrimination on the basis of gender and race in particular negatively affects our economy, as otherwise capable individuals are forced against their will to contribute less. Such primitive notions of superiority must be dismantled post-haste. And we want to hear the event. Well, I hope you could hear it. If not, it is what it is. But an end to nepotism. Nepotism is a blight upon any nation seeking responsible and stable government. Like a parasite, it saps away a talent in favor of those born to the right people. And in England, it is worryingly pervasive. We tolerated some degree of nepotism because it was the right way of the world, but the kind all too indulged in by the royal party has attached itself to the government like a disease. We must snuff it out. We will give every one fair warning. From today on, there will be no more favor exchanging, no more saving jobs for friends, or else there will be heck to pay. There will be some who think making a publicity stunt like the Royal Party occasionally did. They will find themselves most grievously mistaken, and their trials will send a message to the rest of the to fall in line. Nice. I got some military police, and happy new decade, my friends. It is now 1970, which means more civvies. Oh, look at that. Very good. 
and then the Women in the Workforce Act. Let's see if we can get this one passed. English women have continually left their mark on history over the centuries. Our greatest monarch is even to this day, undoubtedly Queen Victoria, and few deny the glories of Queen Elizabeth in the 1500s. Why, then, should women be forced to work only the most menial jobs for little pay or security? as barbaric and too German for United King united england's liking the woman working or workforce act is a project that has been worked upon for several years now a comprehensive piece of legislation that will forbid discrimination against workers on the basis of sex and forbid pay differentials between men and women for the same work this will hopefully encourage women to be more active in the workforce whilst also guaranteeing them protection with any luck while some unsavory individuals dumb enough to test the words of this act as well examples are stunningly useful to force compliance hey look at that would we like to have that one yes why not and we got another military factory, not bad. Nothing down there yet, and that's okay. And then the right reforms. You can never be too careful when changing delicate systems, and what system is more delicate than that of society itself? We are in United England are not so much or so aloof that we cannot recognize when aspects of society must be adjusted to better provide for the welfare of all involved, and hence Macmillan has outlined a series of carefully planned changes to be made nationwide over the coming months, titled The Right Reforms, and marketed as a government granting rights which should always be ha should have been present, were it not for the interference of the government with the dudist or fascist incompetence of our prior governments. With the reforms in place, our economy will hopefully improve in response, certainly England could use it. Actually, are we passing an act right now? No, we're not. That's fine. Cool. Um, let's save our PP for now, because we might need it. Oh, yes, that's very good. Very good. And we'll grab some of this so we get some more max factories in the state. Because we can't... We never have enough civvies. Ah, uh, that's fine to cut down, I think, for now. It's fine. Not bad. And we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm in our little English February. <clears throat> or I guess, really British. Because someone did say we united... It says the United Kingdom, but really, we are Great Britain. Not, not the UK, because we don't have Northern Ireland. But let's see. Okay. 272 out of the 617. Um, we need to support of at least 309. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. More Macmillan, so it'll definitely help us out. Actually, you know what? Let's increase other people's influence first, and then we can increase ours last, which will help stifle the support for other groups. Um, Royal Party and the Liberals. Well, actually, oh, I can just come right here. It says, uh, it's not bad. 40. Oh, we didn't need the Royal Party to work with us. Oh! Okay. Well. Let's lower their support. There you go, 353. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. And then we're going to make sure we'll do... Oh, combat the royal party. Democratization will decrease. Um, oh, that'll decrease as well. Plant the poison. Jail the rats. A letter to Chesterton. Send him to Germania. The anti-fascist pact. Combat the royal party. Royal party will support decrease. And, f and reveal the findings. Are those, these the people you voted for? The Corruption Act. Lock the traitors up. Ooh. Boy, the Royal Party rots. Um, Royal Party support will decrease anyways. The Greedy Iron Lady. Ally the Thatcherists. That's kind of interesting. Political Power Gain. She's much like the rest. Swamp her clique. The Thatcher is pacified. No longer a threat. Uh, let's make sure that this will never rise again. When a feral dog attacks a human being, you do not coddle the animal. You do not let it live while the potential for danger remains from it. Any sensible person may merely compels it to stay still before blasting the diseased creature in the head, and the metaphor being used here ought to be applied to those who corrupt England's soul with fascism as well. Not literally, unfortunately. There are certain standards which must be maintained after all. No, we need to choose a target. Our work will require the so-called loyal opposition be neutralized on a political level. It's quite unfortunate, but then again, we wouldn't need to do this if they hadn't collectively decided to become filthy rat dudes, scum of the earth, German-loving horse sun traders. If they didn't, we wouldn't be here. The question is, who's a bigger traitor? Now, I'm doing that one first just so we can get some more political power up, so we can get another act passed. So, cool. The right reforms. Chairman Macmillan looked over the small bundle of legislative text sitting on his desk, set to be delivered to the House of Commons the next morning. A flash of satisfaction raced through his thoughts. The legislation was nothing new. Indeed, it was long overdue. Small token reforms to England's health care and labor regulations to prove that the government could actually look after the people now that the specter of German intervention in Europe or English politics was gone. Was it going to be enough to convince the people that UE had their interests in mind or on its own? Perhaps not, but in the post-Civil War political landscape, Macmillan was the best people that we were going to get, the only one who knew Westminster inside and out, and who could deliver the promised better future for England. Everyone else would just cock it up. Tomorrow, England would see what competent leadership could do for the country, and Macmillan would make sure they wouldn't forget who made it all possible. A step in the right direction, my friends. Also, there was a comment saying that can we ally France? Um, I don't think France is any state to be allied with us. I don't think we, they can ally with us. They might go by themselves. They might actually join the, the Italians. 
I guess technically they might be able to join the Japanese, but I think at this point, 1970 is a little bit too late. Oh, there goes the Japanese. Um, so they can join the Germans as well, depending on what the Italians do, but it is what it is. But let's go and do the Royal Party Rots. <clears throat> sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The Royal Party's definitely been on the latter end of that phrase, the once mighty titan of English politics, reduced to a tottering behemoth that could fall at any moment. Perhaps it would be mercy to put the Royal Party down before they could descend further. In any case, the best way to fell a giant is to strike at their legs. We'll finish this bastion of corrupt traitors and move on. May England remember them for the monsters they became and not the party they once were. We got a lot of support for conservative democracy in exact 50%. That's actually really nice. And we'll soon have this act pass. Hopefully get more GDP. That's all we care about here, GDP. But let's go and do then... Oh, we get this one? Oh. A labor Act, the Fair Employment. Let's do labor. The working man is one of the core personages of England, for without them, who would keep our mighty industry running and our buildings from falling down? It is only right, therefore, that our government enshrines some protections for the employees of all businesses, government, and civilian alike in law rather than mere words alone. From this day forward, the workers of England ha shall have a respectable minimum wage, cannot be forced to work beyond a certain number of hours before without overtime, and will have the right to take complaints against their employer on the subject of ill treatment or unjust firing due to commission. We shall also implement a more stringent series of workplace health and safety laws. Combine these endeavors should greatly improve the lives of the average Englishman. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Keep spending. The act passes. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. But every own state, medium increase in domestic jobs. The month, state's monthly domestic job growth will be increased by 0.1%. Women in the workplace has been replaced with gender equality, so the less monthly population. More recruitable population factor. Less stability, more factory output. Nice. Doesn't it really affect here, but the end of the royal party. Oh boy. Nice. The Labor Act. <clears throat> Quite laborious. All right, and let's come to Alpha. It just I always go this one. Screw. It, I'm gonna go this one. This one. No, no, no. I'm gonna go this one still, just because I can use this one. We do a Russian warlord. The end of the royal party, though. The royal party. Macmillan had dismissed them or diminished them so greatly over the years, and yet he couldn't feel but help, like the job hadn't been done just yet or finished. They were the show of the former cells, and nearly half of their numbers are eliminated in countless corruption scandals, and what was left didn't have much left fight left in it. And yet there was always a potential, always a concern, that they could rise again. But would they be the self-same serving fools? Or of course they would want to be. The royal party could not be saved, could not be rehabilitated. It was time to kill the wounded beast completely, leaving only the bare whisper of an opposition if only to preserve democracy. But how would he do it? How would he justify it? With mixed emotions, he realized it didn't matter how he did it, because there's no one left to stop him. I hope Macmillan knows what he's doing. Now... Um, we could do that, and we're going to do both of these, but I've oh, got to make a decision here. So with this one, combat the Royal Party, or crack down on the National Front. I think we probably want to do... The, mm, this one, we're being pretty darn authoritarian. As someone did say, we're pretty much like, you know, we love democracy, but we're not really democratic. So, we'll try to get rid of all of our opposition, and I don't know if we're going to have the same thing here with modeling. I kind of doubt it, but I think for this one, when we play as modeling, I want to be... You know, try to work with as many people as possible. But for this one, I think we want to get rid of his people. So instead of ally the Thatcher, Thatcherites, Thatcherists, we'll probably, she's much like the rest. So we'll probably do that one. And since we're already working on getting rid of them, then we won't combat the party here. We'll probably go ahead and do Crackdown on the National Front. So let's go ahead and those who, few, who got away. As surprising as it might be, the monstrous corruption of the royal party is not a universal fact. Oh, for sure, the majorities are redeemably corrupt, but there exists a handful of moderates who align with the RP out of genuine belief rather than any allegiance to the corrupt party system which perpetuated the royal party. Considering the number of pres pressing events we have on our schedule at the moment, it might be worth doing to leave them be. First, of course, we will need some insurance. Insurance is always good to have, even though it might be a little bit too costly or expensive. Just maybe we might take, but some coffee. Alright, so we got five days left, and eh, we can kind of get out of that one first. Yeah, I definitely want to increase high command and get more jobs and civvies and stuff like that. Actually, can we... We had one thing here when we first began this that we could um, improve poverty, but oh well. Nice. Cool, and let's see, 269 out of 309. What do we want? Royal Party? Uh, let's go with the Royal Party, and then we'll do the Macmillanists as well. There you go. That's a lot of PP. That's alright. Up next... We're just going to go ahead and reduce unemployment, probably. Yeah, that's fine. Not bad. Uh, can we build any cities yet? Nope. We're building a lot of coastal forts just in case for the future. So after that one, then we're going to go do make them bend the knee. Make them re ooh, repeat. Oh, we get some stuff. Make them bend the knee. An opposition is a useful thing. Better us than them, as Harold Macmillan says. Thus, despite our contempt for the handful of idiots still following the royal party, 
we shall let them be, so long as we have some assurances of their conduct. A simple signed agreement will do. It will be a simple promise for the royal party, where they promise not to pursue any action that would destabilize the government, to do their utmost to discourage fascism where they can, and not to get in our way. Most of them will keep to it, but there might be one or two to use as an example. Which is pretty darn nice. And then, the greedy Iron Lady. Miss Thatcher is a curious woman, it really must be said. Unlike the rest of her corrupt abomination of a party, she has some principles which, with which she conducts herself. An affair that seems to baffle her co-workers. We face something of a conundrum in dealing with the women known as the Iron Lady. Perhaps we should just bear sweep her aside with the rest of her party, but her potential to lead as a puppet opposition leader is great enough to counterbalance the risks. Even more than that, showing the olive branch towards the other non-fascist parties will go a long way towards helping our cause. Look at you do that, but I want to sideline everybody. Macmillan or nothing. Nice. And good. Oh, we can grab that. Let's grab some extraction as well. Oh, we can build more. Thank goodness. We still can't build in Cornwall, darn it. What's Cornwall like? Is it a nice place to go? Is it rainy over there? That probably is fairly rainy. And that's okay. So, we'll get the thing passed, which is great, great, great. Because who doesn't want to pass their things? She's much like the rest. Swamp Creek. A string on her puppets. Actually, that would not be too bad, though. Hmm. Make them bend the knee. With the greedy Iron Lady. A change in the air. This thing is slowly becoming better in Scotland. The air is less foggy and the skies are a little brighter. And the people aren't as angry as they used to be. It seems the hatred and anger towards the English in Scotland has gotten better. Resentment will always be there, it seems, but right now it isn't manifesting itself as it used to. Our government is slowly getting a grip on the situation. And hopefully soon, it'll be only a dark memory. May there be peace in the north. Hmm. Actually, hmm. I really want to go down this way, actually, right now. Just because you get more political power. I like that a lot, but... ah, uh, She's much like the rest. Margaret Thatcher is too dangerous to leave at her back. The woman turned the corrupt shell of a party which had been split three ways into the second most fearsome political force in England. Who knows what she could do, given some actual time in the absence of our interference. United England will do the proper thing. We will end our opposition and once for once and for all while, without giving them an opportunity to crawl underground. So England's corruption will burn away today, and it shall be UE that mat lights the match. Good. And there goes the Defile Rebellion. Oh, man. I don't want to have to deal with the oil crisis. Oh, look at that. English history is written. So, we get trinket, undeployment subsidies, hurts our... Oh, GDP costs. Oh, no. The poverty goes up. Low pensions with acceptable pensions. Man, that is not good for our budget. Oh, baby. <clears throat> oh, baby. And, I, and some people... Well, not too many people actually wonder why I tried to maximize. Oh, that we have a deficit now. No! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I don't like that. You know what? I'll cut down the military forces then a little bit. Since no one's going to really invade us for the rest of the campaign. Um, can we actually get rid of you guys? No, we cannot. Alright, well, we made so many divisions. Oh, we can't even do... Alright. There you go. And, uh... Yeah, you do the same sort of thing. Where are you guys at, actually? Um... There you go. Well... And it was about to lag right there really badly, so let's just go and redo this real quickly. So do that and uh, go down to Cornwall. Don't forget London. Isle of Man as well. Nice. Lerwick. Cool. Not bad. An Iron Lady, even without when even when standing alone. <clears throat> A lady doesn't fuss, pronounced Margaret Thatcher, as she waltzed de defiantly into Macmillan's office. Ma Margaret, what's the meaning of, s stated the Prime Minister. No, a lady doesn't fuss when treated poorly, that's how I was taught and how I've taught it. A lady doesn't fuss when ignored, when wounded, when insulted, nor even when slighted. Is that what you think has happened, Margaret? You feel you've been slighted, asked Macmillan, his eyebrows narrowing. Well, if I did, I wouldn't fuss, would I? She asked with a rebellious smile. No, a lady knows that fussing shall get her nowhere, but a lady has other ways of getting what she wants, other ways of taking revenge. Is that so? growled Macmillan, standing up from his desk. Extraordinarily so, Prime Minister, and there's only one more thing you ought to know about a lady. She always gets what she wants in the end. Macmillan slumped back into a seat in shock as the Iron Lady did a about face and left his office with a clack of heels on the stone floor. Perhaps the opposition has some life in it after all. I could probably cut down spending, honestly, just because, like... There's not really much we can do about that now. Um, just because we don't need to spend probably this much money on construction. How much money do we, do we actually spend on construction? That's a good question to ask, actually. Uh, nope, not up there either. That sucks. Oh, man. Having more of a deficit. Not bueno. Yeah, that's pretty good already. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10-ish. 
Oh, crap. No, 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 no. Ah. Well, the Fair Employment Act. Crap, that's not good. Actually, are we going to change our focus tree? We might, actually. Hey, decrease the poverty vote. That's really good, though. Octos for economists. And we were at t 25 to 50%. Now to 15 to 25%. Not bad. All right, so do we have anything about the oil crisis? Oh, what's that? The liberal flower. Um, oh, no, let's, let's reload this. Let's, let's close out of it and open it. We should probably have something about the oil crisis, right? No? Okay, the Fair Employment Act, then. Those members of society who are disabled in mind or body are not the worthless wretches the more callous members of the opposition would like to portray them as. Amputees, the blind, the deaf, can all be made into functioning members of the workforce, if they're only given some basic assistance. We should create an agency for this purpose with an England-wide mandate. <clears throat> Additionally, the act can cover more general situations, where the employer could, and in some unfortunate cases, have taken advantage of their employees due to the power they hold over them. This act would address this, and additionally forbid employees from being fired solely at the whim of the employer. Never let it be said, United England does not care for the helpless. Very good. Oh, no, a billion. Oh, we were doing so well. Even though, when I played as Thatcher, we did pretty darn well at cutting down the debt before the oil crisis erupted, but... Oh, well. At this point, we need actually PP from this. But if we don't boost it up, how much do we get? Oh! Okay, we're not going to boost then. Nope. No boosting here then. No more boost. We're done with that. We still get 1.34 every single day, but Swamp or Cleek. Luckily for us, we still have plenty of dirt on Thatcher and her gang from her time inside the Royal Party and subsequent infiltration of the Modern One. We'll need some extra evidence, though, so let's set a, bat so let's set a bit of bait. Nothing obvious, just enough to ensure that we can get the right people on the right set of charges. We still need the public to buy the trial's legitimacy, after all, and too much evidence might go against the grain. And Iraq is just... Iraq. Oh, we have more than enough already. Not bad. 319 out of 339. Hey, we don't have to do anything. Great. Let's go ahead and get another civvy first. Now let's liberalize the economy. Thank you. And, uh, and just for giants, why not? We get another civvy. Nice. Yeah, we build things pretty darn quickly here. Pretty darn quickly. But at least we still have a deficit. Even during the trying times. Oh, and our GDP growth went down from 3.1% to 2.3%. Not bueno. We can still slice down a little bit. Oh. Oh, wait, what? Did it not go? Oh. That was very weird. Okay. The Thatcherized, Thatcherists pacified. Margaret Thatcher, once the only serious rival to Harold Macmillan for dominion of English politics, is now no longer an issue to be concerned with. Let us move on to better and bigger things now. That corruption and fascism both have been excised from English politics and replaced with some more virtuous and sensible political ideals. The Royal Party was a good opposition for a time, it must be said, but all things must come to an end. It's best we close the door on this act of history. Make with them, make them repent. Why have principled men, if you, why have principled men if you can't use them? Prime Minister Macmillan will call a press conference soon, where the Royal Party moderates will denounce the rest of the party they serve to the public. They'll, we'll need to ensure the media get the right story. But once it's done, we will have a struck a blow against the corrupt heart of the party. Conservatism is a paternalistic ideal, after all, and we're simply ensuring the wayward child of the Royal Party demonstrates their fealty to the true protectors of England. And our GDP just went up a little bit. Probably as well as a debt. Hmm. Interest rates are currently 5.3%, and the deficit to income is minus 4.2. Not bad. Not bad. Looking a little better already. Military austerity, you bet we're going to get that, because we have enough coast, uh, coastal forts to make sure that we never get invaded, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There's nothing here to help us with poverty, though. Ah. Actually, you know what? Let's go and grab um, reduce unemployment. I want to do that one. It's not going to help us out that much, but, eh, it'll still be worth doing, I guess. Actually, no, mm, you know what, I want, I did say I want to do that, but we still have another act to pass as well, so. The Health, the Workers' Health Act. A national health care service, as first suggested in the Beveridge Report so long ago during the Second World War, has been a promised benefit of the Royal Party for some decades now. Yet they never delivered, and so an opportunity arises for UE to make our own mark upon the histories. The Workers' Health Act will provide covered hospital fees for all private hospitals and selected clinics across the nation for all persons without private health insurance. We cannot cover everything or every eventuality, but this basic service will quite literally save tens of thousands of lives over time. Should we implement it well, this act will seal our immor immortality, immortality in the people's minds forever. Oh, look at that. The act passes. That's very good. Oh, well, we can't do that one because we don't meet the requirements because we got fishes. So... Every own state will get a medium increase in economic output of domestic jobs and increase job growth. Nice. There we go. Not bad, my friends. Not bad. So we're almost done here as well. Man, we are doing quite well. It's already October. Wow. 
Uh, air overfilling, why not? We can. And after that, we shall do the opposition no more. Uh, let's see. Did I read this one already? I can't remember. The moderates are now puppets, moving along the strings we have set. While it is true that they could potentially have been the foundation of a capable anti-fascist organization, the possibility that they could have become a threat to our government was far too high. Now they answer to the same man as the rest of England, Harold Macmillan. Macmillan is a man of his word, and for the moderate leadership's cooperation, they will not fall victim to acts and measures they would only otherwise find inconvenient. It's only fear, additionally. They will be permitted to keep the seats they currently hold. So, it's a win, sort of win, for everybody. No matter what happens. Better artillery? Why not? We're still cutting stuff down, even though that went up a little bit more. Oh, baby boy. The opposition, no more. And right now, we have 252, while the Libs have 140, and RP, so how's that match? Wow, that's a nice electoral map, I'm not gonna lie. That's a very nice electoral map. Oh, we need quite a bit more, so let's get the Royal Party, then. Uh... I don't really want to get them, but we need, like, 63, so... We can get a bunch from here and a bunch from there. So let's do the liberals first, maybe. Oh, we're so close. We need, actually, more political power. Oh, man. Um, will we get that much in 50 days? 50 more... Yeah, we can probably get that one done. So, that sucks. We have to get support everybody, including the Royal Party. Oh, disgusting. But, combat them. We already kind of did that one, so... Crack down on the National Front. <clears throat> There, if do not, in the fair English language, exists a series of words properly profane enough to describe our Prime Minister's thoughts on the political organization known as the National Front. We can call them traitors, except that they may actual traitors, that many actual traitors, had a great deal more scruples. We can call them spies and German sympathizers, which would be entirely accurate, yet no, still not quite given the full scope of their debauchery. No, perhaps an accurate description is not needed at the time being. It is an effective plan after all. Under the direct orders of the Prime Minister, the National Front is set to be considered a subversive orga foreign organization, and dealt with as such. We will end the madness of English fascism permanently. Nice. And let's go do that. And we now have enough support. Barely have enough support. Not bad. Chesterton in exile, though. Once we get uh, some more rubber. And surprise move today. Harold Macmillan announced an arrangement with the German embassy, allowing for Chesterton and the inner circle of the National Front to be allowed to serve their punishment through exile rather than through prison time. The Prime Minister stated that this was what was best for everyone, and that this would allow these controversial figures their freedom while still keeping fascism out of English politics. In a statement before he was bundled into a government transport, Chesterton himself vowed that he and his party would continue to fight for the English cause, though he agreed that his time in England needed to come to an end. I hope Macmillan knows what he's doing. What do we get here? What? Did, I, did I make some divisions? I guess we did. Now we're good. Hmm. Let's get some more jobs. And then the last, rats in England. The National Front isn't quite as great as a force it once was. We wouldn't <clears throat> like to take all the credit, which of some, some of which must obviously go to the insanity of the organization in question, but we must admit that it was a pleasure to dismantle it piece by piece. Now, it's just Arthur Kenneth Chesterton, this little gang of syph sycophants, and a handful of others that are left, a paltry band of the force that briefly sought to rival both UE and the Royal Party, but enough to be worth destroying all the same. It's a bit of a shame that we don't have the old dude Mosley around anymore, since he'd make an excellent target for our most righteous vengeance, but we do make with what we can get. Chesterton will suffice. The fascist shall whistle no more. That was the seventh time here in the National Front rattle off about protecting the English identity and defending traditional values from degeneration that finally convinced Macmillan that the National Front needed more of his attention. <clears throat> Those that hadn't been locked up for associating with the black shirts, or for speaking fascist rhetoric, had become scaled at playing off his good graces. They preached the same dangerous nonsense, regardless of it if they threw out a thin coat of deniability over the top. Sly words might have worked on some, some of the population, but Macmillan had no patience for it. Those fascists still walked the streets, still served in parliament, and still undermined democracy. It was time to deal with them once and for all. Remove that influence from international banking? What does that even mean, Chesterton? Oh, we all know what that means. We all know what that means. And that's where I'm going to end that conversation with that, with myself, and right there. Cool. Ah, uh, the problems of the great generals. Ah, uh, right, gentlemen, we're in a bit of a pickle. Bill Alexander wears a determined face as he speaks to the rest of the crowd of generals, each of them looking as determined as he is. Behind them stands a mud-spattered corporal with a dented helmet with an SMLE. Now, what we've got here <clears throat> is a classic envelopment by a simultaneous assault on three different sectors. Cloud, you leave the attack on the right, I'll move to pin the other on, on center. And, um, who are you again? Corporal Charles Chesterton, sir, 5th Battalion, 3rd Infantry, uh, at your service, sir. How the bloody heck did you get in here? This is a command bunker. Can't you see we're commanding? Well, I thought I'd deliver a message, sir. We don't have the time for some regimental message from a corporal right now. Can't you see we're doing some important generalship here? Apologies, sir. I'll cease immediate speaking immediately, sir. 
the corporal takes a step back away from the high command table, labeled as such in large red letters. Right now, the most important decision of all. What shall we name this operation? All the generals are happy to oblige. J operation Silver, Operation Hammerhead, Operation We're Finally Doing Something. Arthur Harris jumps in. Operation Bomb the Bloody Pulp out of the collabs until it looked like my wife's casserole after she's had a touch too much to drink. Hmm, pithy, but a bit too long for a community key. The corporal ahems vigorously. Bill Alexander rolls his eyes. Oh, Christ, it's Mother again. Right, spit it out, corporal, and make it fast. It's a government, sir. They, they're outside the bunker, sir. Ten grenades roll down the steps of the bunker and land underneath the table. The general all looks. The generals all look down in horror, but the corporal stares directly into the camera. It zooms into his face. And now for something completely different. Explosion, cut to black. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hmm. Hope no one ever uh, learns about this in the future. Not too bad, though. Plant the poison and jail the rats. That pass is great. Universal health care. We get more political power. Multi-population. GDP cost goes up again. God dang it. Uh, let's letter to Chesterton. Send him to Germania. Chesterton in exile. Well, we did technically send the others in exile, so I kind of want to do that one. Jail the rats. I, I want to send them to exile. I think that'd be cool. A letter to Chesterton. Why go so much effort through so much effort when you can get the point across politely. Seems all a bit too much work for one traitor and his band of malcontents. No, Prime Minister Macmillan will handle this one personally. The letter will be short and to the point. Arthur Kenneth Chesterton's days in politics are over. If he insists on disputing this, he will suffer the consequences of his past actions that have thus far been postponed for one reason or another. If he's stupid enough to confront us or smart enough to know, we'll never let him get within 20 miles of a reporter. Send him to Germania. The National Front is a German-sponsored subversive organization, and you unfortunately need a better justification than German lapdog to start executing. Vice Prime Minister Maudling came with quite the inventive solution to our issue, why not let the Germans have them? It's simple and stunningly effective, who will op openly support the National Front when they see our enemies giving them succor? Succor. Prime Minister Macmillan is in full agreement with the Liberal faction's suggestions for once, and we have already begun making the preparations for the extradition of Chesterton and his friends. Well, extradition in the sense of dumping him in the German embassy. It'll do. It'll definitely do. Nice. Are we lacking anything here? The effects of unification? With oh, we're still dealing with those. No, we're we have enough. Hopefully, of everything here. Let's check with this now. Nice. Hopefully, that's going to be good. 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 I really don't want to get down our PP, but if we have to, if we did that, we would have enough for now. But now we only get 1.22 every single day, which actually is not too bad. That's actually not too bad. Send him to Germania. The National Front... Oh, wait, I just read this one. Duh. I am so pushing ahead as long as we can, but no longer a threat? Why not? That just talk of unity and strength in the Royal Party was not meant to be applied to England as a whole, but rather the sickly chimera she led. Now that we've pushed her out of government and into a cold cell, we can finally begin building a free United England in peace. Our economy will not be sold out to wealthy elites. Our government will not be dictated by the iron will of one woman. Our party will preserve all the ideals that make England truly great. Hey, 90 billion GDP, not bad. And actually, our growth is still at 2.3%. It's not bad. And the Anti-Fascist Act. I did want to do this one first, just because that's, we're going to need some more political power for this one. So let's make sure we get enough political power first. Then we should not go down city spending. Oh, well. If we go below 50 billion, I feel like we've been we've done very, very well. Yeah, there's not a lot of support for the National Front here. 1%, lower democracy, and then authoritarian democracy with Rab Butler. And then we'll do the Anti-Fascist pa pa Act. Fascism is a plague, a disease upon all that is well and good in English society. It molds and corrupts what it touches into parodies of their original selves, <clears throat> burning a scar right into the fabric of entire institutions. This will be allowed no longer. And with the Anti-Fascist Act, United England will be seen to do what every government prior to now should have done. We will scourge this monstrosity from our island. The key to this, of course, is not to merely make fascism illegal, but also those ideologues adjacent to it, the sort of which the fascists would attempt to camouflage their insidious beliefs with. By banning them too, we can e still easily reach the deplorables. We will call our little scuffle with a national front finish once this last of them are rotting in prison as a reward for the cleverness. Cool. And the liberal flower, which sounds really kind of disgusting, but it is what it is. I don't know. I have no opinion. We talk about man's, men's flowers here? Oh, God. <clears throat> the Liberals, quite such a quaint little group. Once they were our only effective allies, but in recent times, the Prime Minister has been doubting their worth for a variety of reasons, not least that they seem oddly squeamish about preventing the disloyal opposition from using elections as a cover to bring back the Germans. Optimism is all well and good, but not when you apply it to the honorless thugs like Thatcher and Chesterton. Granted, one of them isn't truly a problem for us anymore, and yet we still have to need to address the root cause here. The Liberals weaken us. They represent a vulnerability in United England's armor. We must patch it however we can. Democracy here in our United England? 
we have the disguise of democracy. And the liberal flower. Hmm. A failed partnership, my friends. A failed, failed partnership. Okay, that's not too bad. And let's grab some better engineers, because we could always use better engineers. All right. <clears throat> we'll cut down spending eventually. And let's go up here to a network and Macmillanists. Oh, we need one more. I'm glad we saved our PP for this. Uh, we'll do the libs then. Three, two, seven. Very nice. We will get it passed and silence them. Modeling was a great friend. Let's do this one first. Silence them. Their ability to appeal to the ordinary English man has always been through the strength of the liberals. And now that they're beginning to act in opposition to UE's goals, it might be worth addressing what could be called an emergency threat. <clears throat> or emerging threat. Nothing harmful, of course, no. We'll just have some frank conversations with the media outlets, especially those on radio and TV. It wouldn't do for some of the more disaffected to lose sight of the purpose and start blaming us for the failures of the liberals. This is no kindness, but it is necessary if we're to expunge the weakness that might allow the beast of fascism back into England. You never know what might happen. Well, we've got a lot of population here, but a failed partnership. Chairman Macmillan stormed out from the parliament, furious as he often found himself after days like this. Hours have been he's been scolded. Uh... Talk down to or otherwise thwarted by the liberal faction. He fumes, standing in place for a moment. His fingers cooling up at the disgust. A man dared to catch his eyes across the street. Modeling. Oh boy. Modeling who had entered the UE party as his partner. As his friend who was meant to be the whip for the liberals to keep them in line. And yet as time went on, he had proved himself useless. Alternating between refusing to keep his faction in check. Or joining them in outright denouncing Macmillan's government. Modeling Macmillan's glare with sad eyes. Bowing his head low in shame. Both men knew that modeling had failed at his duty. The PM snorted in anger and began walking to his car. If modeling could keep his people in line, then there would be no problem. <sighs> the liberals. That's why we must silence them. For those who resist. One advantage of modeling, tipping his hand all those months ago, is that it has shown us that leaving the reins of party power in the hands of the untrustworthy is a mistake not worth repeating. To save the soul of England, we will need to quash those who might object before they can use their influence against us. We can fire the radical liberals from their positions, and those unwilling to work with us can be simply be expelled from the party. There exists a possibility that we might be underestimating them. However, so just in case, we'll deal with any liberal associates in the officer corps as well. Oh, very good. It never hurts to cover all your bases on matters like these. Oh, King of Siberia against the WRF? Kind of interesting. Okay, silence them. Very good. We love silencing our opposition. Or those who claim to be allies. Even though he was a great friend. Reginald Maudling has been a stalwart ally despite his own flaws and ambition. Perhaps that is why the next step will be so difficult. For he has many who respect him. They probably don't know about this two-faced nature. Or his two-faced nature. Prime Minister Macmillan ought to be the one to do it. Maudling and Macmillan know another know one another decently well, so Macmillan will be able to break the news to him best. With any luck, we can give him a position of little authority outside the party for him to fritter the rest of his days away on. Not much money, but hey, less than 50 billion is not bad. Pretty nice. Uh, and, oh, let's see, now we have a couple more acts. Now we definitely have to keep our PP, so. The act fast is very good. English history is written. We got more political power. Great, great, great. No more fascism here, my friends. Not with super mech in power. Let's keep our PP though, but he must go. By far the greatest shame about this whole affair is having to explain what is happening to modeling himself. The man deserved better, but his weakness will not serve England well if he were to remain in a position of influence and power. No, 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 no. It is better this way. After all, at least he'll still have responsibilities, not just political ones anymore. He'll probably enjoy the relaxation after the last few stressful years he's had. With the parting of old friends, democracy hesitation will go down. Uh, UE's liberal support will go down. Remove, oh, we remove we remove him from head of government. Oh, he actually gave us plus fifteen percent more political power. Wow. Oh no, no we no we get this. Harold McMillan, we get the head of the government. Okay, nice, very cool. That'll help make up for the whole Scotland thing that we did earlier. Un unhappy plan though. Quietly drinking his afternoon tea, the plan was decided upon and Sheriff McMillan's head. It was a harsh plan, but one that needed to be done. Truthfully. It wouldn't hurt him any, uh, <clears throat> hurt him more than anyone else, despite the fact that it wouldn't look that way. Truthfully, he supposed that he would, should have been the angry one, for it was no fault of his own that this had happened. He was merely reacting to what happened around him. He girded his heart and allowed the quite, quite certainty to surface in his mind to, into a resolute thought. Modeling had to go. His hand trembled as he picked up his teacup once more. Darn modeling for making me do this. It's his fault. The Protection of Our Democracy Act. The P.O.D. The Pod Act. 
The time has come. Prime Minister Harold Macmillan can look over England now and see a land dedicated to the expulsion and fighting of fascism wherever it lies. However, we must take steps to ensure that things remain this way. Now that we've dealt with the Liberals and half the opposition, <clears throat> the Protection of Democracy Act will play a fairly outsized role in this. The act itself is one of the more complex pieces put to a parliament by the Prime Minister, but holds true in the essentials to the vision of the UUE. It gives the office of the Prime Minister certain <clears throat> discretionary powers when it comes to matters of national security, in addition to the ability to determine what is and isn't a fascist group. All for the good of the people, of course. All for the good of the people. A parting of old friends, though. Modeling cut the glass whiskey Macmillan slid to him across the desk. You know, we certainly had some good times, didn't we, Reggie? Sir, asked Modeling as his heart sank. He knew deep down what this was, but he couldn't bear to admit it. Oh, Reggie, are you really going to make me say it out loud? So then he confirmed it. Modeling felt a shudder rack his body. So who will taking, be taking my position, sir? No one, Reggie. By God, if you couldn't do it, no one can. I'll run the party directly. Oh, I'll fall in line. Modeling nodded sadly. Macmillan was most likely correct. With them serving as his own whip, it was doubtful the liberals would be exercising their independence for much longer. One last drink, Reggie, to the good to the good times, offered Macmillan, raising his own glass to Reggie with a bittersweet smile. I don't think I had the heart, sir, said Modeling, blinking away with tears. Oh, Ma Macmillan nodded somberly and allowed his old friend to leave the office with what dignity he had left. Goodbye, Reggie. I only wish things had gone differently. Now I definitely want to play Modeling. I don't see what happens with him. I really want to play him now. After all this. Oh, boy. Breaking my heart. Modeling was such a good young chap. Well, maybe not young, but he's still a chap. Let's keep her PP. Whoa! Look at that. 1.49. We did quite a bit better. Not bad. And there goes Iran. It has fallen apart as Iran normally should. Cool. And the Patriot Act. In a case in the age of information, and thanks to a rather obscure case going through the courts recently, we'll now be able to have all the information on our citizens that we need to protect them. The Patriot Act is a cornerstone of England's new domestic policy on matters of national security, namely that the government has a prerogative to take any action needed to protect the nation from fascist subversion and treachery. Which kind of sucks that we can't take it currently, because we have the bill in place right now, so... Oh boy, we need more PP for this one. We'll do that one. Uh, we'll do the... Let's do the Liberals. I'm going to increase our influence first. We need 309, so we actually have enough PP for now. Um, we can do the Macmillanists too, but... I want to get their support first, so the next time when we do the Patriot Act... Oh god, that sounds so bad to say. I don't like the Patriot Act, to be honest. But anyways. Not, nothing about personal politics here. Anyways. Um, but yeah, this one... We'll be good to get down, but we'll definitely increase... Um, actually, technology doesn't matter. Let's let time go on. Uh, just, yeah, let them go on. It really doesn't matter too much. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to increase Macmillan's support for when we get to the next part. I don't know why that took me so long to say. Holy crud. My apologies. My mind just, like, just blanked right there. But at least we still get one, almost two and a half political power a day now. So, that's pretty good. If that's the case, uh, hmm. Support for the libs, huh? No. Actually, do that one first. And now we got to save the rest of our PP. Because we like civvies. That's still not bad. I mean, realistically, I don't I don't know if I hit zero debt with Thatcher. I wonder what modeling is up to. No, modeling will probably increase the debt even more, probably. Because probably even more social spending and stuff like that. From what it seems like. I could be wrong about that. But that's just what it seems like. And now we have uh, 22 days left. You know what? I'll see you when we're almost done supporting the Patriot Act. And here we are, my friends, almost in 1972, December 20th right now, though. But I've, we were already voting on the Patriot Act. And the last thing that for the last bill we, bill we passed with the Protection of Our Democracy Act, it changed what? It changed, let's see, it was something over around here. It was meeting social laws, I think. Was it social laws, capital punishment? No. It was, ooh, I forget which one it was. Ooh, I didn't forget, it's just, where is it? Military, it's not military. It's really closed borders, outlawed. Public meetings? Was it public meetings? No. It was not that. State press only. Elite voting. Regardless, we lost like 0 0.02 political power every single day, so it really wasn't too much. Um, voting franchise? No, it wasn't that. Economic laws? It definitely wasn't that. Social development? Uh, limited health? Da, 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 da. But anyways, we're, we're about to pass the Patriot Act, which is... It is what it is. We'll put it like that. Police. Yeah, I don't remember where it is. Political power gain? Universal. It's not voting. It's not that. State press? No. No, it's none of this stuff. Uh, oh, that's a temple. Thank you. Education deferment, yeah, but it really was not very much of anything at all, so it's not, it wasn't that important, so. Multi-party system, state religion, the act passes, so for this one, English history is written. So we get security service with more GDP costs, no supervision with military policing, less division attack, but more leader experience gain. Cool. And now we should be able, technically be able to do this one. 
Well, we, the conservative wing must have 100% influence. Oh, well, let's go a little more influence with, it doesn't really matter. Um, did I actually never read this one yet? Oh, Harold Macmillan has led us to greatness. <clears throat> Under his guidance, England is once again more ascended to a position of respect, if not influence, on the international stage. Interna internal enemies have been swept aside, and the evil twins of corruption and fascism excised from the international con from the national consciousness. Yes, the path has been a hard one, and some have fallen along the way, but compared to the alternative, our actions have been a mercy upon the people of England. Let it be heard by all who will listen. God save the king, and long live Prime Minister Macmillan. Now let's go ahead and... Okay, the game does not want to pause. That is very weird. Yeah, when I press the spacebar right now, it doesn't want to do that. Ooh. It only happens when you tab in and tab out a whole lot like I do. The game does not respond sometimes, so... Okay, my keyboard does not work at all right now. Okay, that's okay. But yeah, if you tab in and tab out a whole bunch like I do, that's what happens, so... And let's go and do it! My allegiance is to Mac and democracy! Very nice, very nice. So, I think this is pretty much going to be the end of the campaign then, once we get this one done. it would be kind of cool. Oh, it's only 73% government stability. That's not good. And we, and we are led by their majesty, Henry the Ninth, there. So, if you like to read about him, please go right ahead. So, I thought there would be another leader after this one as well. But, let's see what the event says. <clears throat> the Triumph of the Shadow Master. <clears throat> Harold Macmillan, a simple minister with simple plans for England, leaned back in his plush leather chair and smiled. He took a brief sip of his best whiskey and looked out of the bustling streets of nighttime London. Nothing could be cozier than his little lounge, with his little glasses and little books, all neatly arranged in a row, exactly where they should be, exactly where he wanted them. There were more important texts than a brief history of British involvement in Afghanistan by William Eng Englesworth to consider now. Mountains of documents on every MP in the house, pages of secrets on each minister and executive and business, an important official and general. All his, all, all collected by his apparatus, now moving like clockwork to secure his influence over the government. That influence had never been greater, and it was time for him to decide the path of the nation, now truly united under his guidance once. There had been discord now. There was only harmony, harmony amongst the MPs, harmony in the party, harmony in the country. He could take pride in the fact that democracy could be maintained in such splendid order, and it was all his doing, hot democracy. This, he thought, is the way things Things ought to be the way they have to be, for England was his to watch over and keep safe. He would do what was necessary by now, no one else could, and England shall be free. And we get a one party state with a political parties law, more political power, and ideology drift defense. And unfortunately, that is the end of our campaign run, playing as a Macmillanist super mech England, or really United Kingdom, or really just Great Britain. But that was actually a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it. This was a pretty relatively short campaign compared to what I did as Thatcher, so. Hey man, if you enjoy the campaign like me, do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. Because I really enjoyed this campaign. It was a, I, I really liked it. I'm, I appreciate the guys and everyone who recommended me play as Mac, Super Mac here. So it was a lot of fun. But I guess I'll see you guys in another video tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great British rest of your day.